Okay, so um, this is huge for California, and unfortunately, everybody's running out of money, and it's looking pretty grim. But we'll we try. Um, Diet Peppy's root weevil. Those on the coast. Uh, this was introduced from Florida about 10 years ago, probably in palm trees, unregulated palm trees in the soil as grubs. They eat a numerous types of plants, and they're they are edgers. They are like Fuller's rose weevil in that they edge and they notch leaves. They are they are difficult in some ways to distinguish from Fuller's rose weevil on citrus because of that notching. But they tend to notch leaves that are up high on the tree in the upper canopy. And Fuller's rose weevil tends to be down lower than which is why they ask you to skirt your trees to protect from fuller rose weevil on the lower foliage. If you look into citrus management, pest management, um, these guys make an egg sandwich. They lay their eggs and they fold the leaf together and so they, the eggs are inside the leaves folded together. They haven't spread too far from the initial quarantine area. This is one of those pests that should have been under control and quarantined and eradicated from San Diego, but they just ran out of money. And it um, is basically west of I-5 and south of Oceanside, and then there's pockets of it in Long Beach and Orange County. Um, it's a gorgeous beetle. Uh, kids love it, and it comes in many flavors. It's got orange, green, red, blue. It's really a nice, it's a nice pet. And so as part of our detection program, we a lot of times it was the kids that, that, that brought it in. Um, and so don't be surprised if you're in Encinitas and you have this pest. But if you're inland in Poway, Ramona, Escondido, we really want to know. We really need to know if it's gone that far. So um, we did. We have had it found once in east of 15 in Poway, and once east of 15 in like Sierra Mesa. And the person had bought a palm tree from a backyard grower in Encinitas. So we think she brought it with that palm tree and she noticed it right away. It had emerged from the soil and was sitting right on her little new palm tree like, Hi! Nice to see ya! But thus far it seems to like it on the coast. Um, but this is a huge pest for our industry if we were to start shipping it around the state. And it's a very insecticide intensive pest treating both the foliage and the root ball. So, so many plants. So many plants, but citrus, it's known as a citrus root weevil. Because it, in citrus, in the lemon industry, in Encinitas, in like Lone Jack Road, it was devastating because it was in clay soil, the larvae ate the roots, the root, the tree got uh, root rot, and they killed over. Oh. I'm sorry, Tracy, I'm a little confused. Is it citrus or the palm? Everything. Yes. So I'm in big trouble. All of the above. I, I live next to a palm company. <laughs> Not well, necessarily. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Where we think it came in from Florida was before we had, uh, in, there was a number, of, in, in the boom years, when people were bringing in big palm trees and bringing them to the coast and planting huge palm trees, that's where we think it came in initially. And the local palms are fine, grown here, um, except if they were to get infested. So that's why we need to know where it's spreading in the county. It's going real slow, luckily. Yes, I'm just wondering, are there people, like 
entomologist consultants that you can hire to come look at your garden and kind of like assess what they see? And, or do we have to go bug by bug and drive down to you? I mean, <laughs> <laughs>
Um, so if you see this, you know that something's out of balance. Now, who's egg, whose egg masses are these? Just a guess. So you guys are all up on those urban pests, aren't you? I haven't seen them near me. I only have black widows. I live in the park, and I have very rare pots, and they're all over the park. Oh, no. Okay, so I was just a pop quiz to make sure you knew what your hazards in your workplace were. Um. We are also looking for red imported fire ants. There are spots of infestation in the county in Mira Mesa and on the base, Miramar base. And we have a very low key eradication program going on. It's limited to a few areas. There's a Poway school that's infested, Twin Oaks, uh, Twin. Peaks Middle School and Terra Bonita Middle School. Then we have Mira Mesa High School, um, Heritage Park, Miramar College, College um, Walker Wagenheim Elementary, that have populations that every time we um, treat, the, the mound leaves, but then another mound pops up. So all we're doing is kind of suppressing it from spreading, but we're not really getting a handle on it. So we want to keep this pest from spreading. Again, it's not, it's a, it's really, at this point, our, uh, we, the commissioner's office is trying to do the best that we can with, but it's one of those pests that we kind would like to know where they are in the county, but unlike Asian citrus psyllid, there's really no muscle behind enforcing getting rid of it. It's just something that we want to keep from spreading because this guy, if it gets into a nursery area, just like diaprepes, costs the growers a lot of money to control, plus it just is a lot of environmental use of pesticides. So we're trying to keep it under control. If you're hesitant about their native fire ants that look the same, act the same, a little less aggressive. They all like irrigated turf, okay? So you're not going to find these guys in your backyard in Ramona that has no irrigation. You'll find the, um, the harvester ant. So the harvester ant you'll find, and they do sting. They won't crawl up your legs much unless you're standing right on their nest. They do pack a wall up as far as the sting. But these, the fire ants will crawl up your legs if you're in a nest and sting, uh, you'll get a bunch of stings at once. So uh, this is a safety hazard and it's also just an environmental hazard because the amount of pesticides that would need to be used to keep it under control from us not spreading it elsewhere. Um, so if you have ant sample questions, you can bring them in and they uh, get, uh, try not to put them, sm like with every other sample, try not to smash it, put it in a Ziploc bag. If you have to handle Q-tips or something like that so you don't actually come in contact with the critter. And then put a, if you can put some air in the bag so the thing doesn't get crushed, that way I can look at it much more easily than getting stuck. Yes. It's hard to tell from the slide. Is it a dark red or a true red? What what color is it so we can identify? Um, it is a red-headed ant with sort of a brown, dark brown abdomen. It's a red ant that is medium-sized. In other words, do you know what a harvester ant like, looks like? It's a pretty big ant, right? And then an Argentine ant is pretty small. So some of the workers of the colony of red imported fire ant are about the same size as an Argentine ant. And then they're, the biggest ones are about three quarters the size of a harvester ant. So they're a medium sized ant that is red and black, but very fast, easily agitated, and in irrigated areas. So it will be on baseball fields, lawns, turf, they love that kind of thing. And um, really, if we let the turf dry up, they would go away. 
<laughs> but uh, they, when you kick them out, sometimes, and, and I want to say, um, here in California, where they live, in Southern California, they don't make those big mounds like they, you see in the pictures of in, in uh, Louisiana and whatnot. Because they live in turf and in managed turf, the mounds are often mowed over. So there's no big mounding that we see. We see little patches of dirt maybe, but it's it, at the most it's like a gopher mound, at the most. And then the rest of the time it's just uh, raised dirt in the turf. So at the most it's like a gopher mound or a disturbed gopher mound. Yes? Do you have a question? Mm -hmm. Five minutes. Okay. So keep an eye out for the ants. Bamboo mealybug, has everybody seen bamboo mealybug? Okay, this is a huge problem in bamboo. Um, it is throughout the county. And there are two types of pests that attack bamboo, and this one is the destructive ones. Um, the best way to control it is to cut down your bamboo and treat with the systemic and let it grow back with the systemic. Jim Bethke was the only one who's ever done research on it. Pyroform scale is a um, very, in what is that critter right there? Yes. A what? Mealybug destroyer. Right there. That's a name. And it's it's hard to tell, but there's a good picture of it out in the poster. They disguise themselves as mealybugs, but they're really larvae of the ladybug. Um, and pyroform scale is a very interesting looking scale. It's so dark up here. Uh, it is on a lot of Loris nobilis, like if you're a native plant gardener, um, it, it's often there, and it can be quite a destructive scale. It's a B-rated scale, which means it's of concern to the to the agricultural commissioner, <coughs> and it's hard to suppress once you get this um, pyroform scale. So if you see anything like that, it also is like the cottony cushion scale in that it has a lot of eggs underneath it, and it's got a lot of white cotton mass under it, and it's kind of it's shaped like a triangle. Um, fruit flies, always looking out for fruit flies. And this is, lesser snow scale is something we get on shipments all the time. So I, won't ex I wouldn't be surprised if we start having it here. It's, um, unfortunately you cannot see, I hate it when people do this to me, but it's, uh, it's on the stem of this Dracaena all over the place, and it's these little white guys distributed all up and down the Dracaena. And it's often in shipments from Costa Rica or, um, you know, uh, Hawaii or Florida. Magnolia white scale, same thing. Costa Rica, Florida, Hawaii. It comes in and it loves Phoenix Robolini, and it will um, it will just grow right along the stem, and it's on the underside of the of the of the Phoenix Robolini plants. And again, it's a white scale. It has females that are kind of triangular and males that are long and slender, a lot like the lesser snow scale. And we Hawaii has this erythrina wasp damage that has been imported to the island. I don't know if you guys been told about erythrina wasp yet. Mm -hmm. And it, it's like a gall wasp, but it affects coral trees. Mm -hmm. So we don't have it yet, but they expect that sooner or later we're gonna get it. So um, you can keep, if you see any malformations on a coral tree, you should probably notify somebody like, you know, John Kavashima or somebody Cheryl or me or somebody. Um, now this is a one on crotons, and they it's it's one. This is a picture of our one of our interceptions. Mm -hmm. uh, most of these pictures are from our interceptions, actually. 
And this is a soft scale. And what I can say about soft scale is we generally have brown soft scale, black soft scale, a lot, polyphagous. If you see any soft scale that is light in color, light green, um, or transparent, then it might be an exotic soft scale. And so go ahead and, and take another look at it. Okay, I want to quick discuss snails because snails are a big deal in our lives. And we have brown garden snail, we have white garden snail, we have uh, <coughs> different, a whole bunch of, we didn't bring our snail uh, exhibit, but we do get, uh, snails are going to be more of a risk. I wanted to just bring this up, and I know Vince has written an article about it, that there are a lots of um, gastropods that carry a disease called um, rat, or not a disease, but a nematode called rat lungworm. And at, just because we are at a hub of getting invasive pests brought here from tropical areas, um, we need to be cautious with snails because they do, pop, practically any gastropod can carry these nematode. And we, the U.S. regularly intercepts giant African land snails, and we have, Afri <coughs> we have apple snails at Lake Miramar, and we regularly intercept, intercept the semi-slug from Hawaii that is by studies in Hawaii has 80% of them are infected with this nematode and we've sent the ones that we catch from on our plants from Hawaii, we've sent them to the lab and found out that they do indeed have the nematode in them. So we, what happens is it's possible for one slug and one snail that has the rat nematode in it to walk over a path of another slug or another snail and give them the rat nematode. So this is a hazard that we want to be aware of in our environment. And I want to quick say that Brady Bina is a snail that we intercept frequently from Hawaii and Florida. It's a little snail with a black stripe along its uh, this little um, outer edge. And it's a medium-sized snail, snail, at least just about an inch long. And um, it too can carry the rat lungworm, which quickly is the rat eats the snail, the snail eats the rat poop, <laughs> and on it goes. And the, the nematode goes from the snail to the rat, and it lives in the rat's lungs. The rat poops it out in its poop, and the snail eats the poop. And we are an intermediary host that is not intended to be the host of the, of the nematode, but it causes encephalitis, and the only way to deal with it is to endure, and it will kill weak people who, can, who do not have an immune system to break down the nematode when it gets in the blood ba brain barrier. So um, this, this, um, this angiostrongylitis is, is a type of nematode that we don't want to have come to Southern California. And right now, um, there it's mainly in Asia and Florida. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> Actually, it's a really important to take note that in Hawaii, don't let your kids play with snails, slugs, or the others. Because it's, it's, it's very much a hand-to-mouth contact type thing, where they pick up a slug and then it goes, to, you know, they touch it and then put the nematode to their mouth. Oh, God. So thank you very much for your attention.